Welcome back to my channel. My name is Rick and today we're going to do a setup and review of the Lorax 2K Pan Tilt Outdoor Wi-Fi Security Camera. The good folks at Lorax were kind enough to send me this one for review and I'm excited to see it and put it through its paces. Let's start with what is this camera? This, in, this camera in particular is an IP66 weatherproof pan tilt camera that has a 360 degree coverage area. So why would you buy a camera like this? And before I get into all of the nerdy specs, I think you need to understand what a pan and tilt camera can do and what are some of the benefits. Pan tilt cameras give a lot of flexibility into what you can see with one camera. You have the ability to see much more of your surroundings both horizontally as well as vertically, which means you're gonna get a lot of coverage with not a lot of equipment. My current Lorax setup, which I've had in place since 2018, it has an NVR with five cameras and a doorbell attached, but if I was just starting out or didn't want to install a lot of equipment, I could install one of these on the garage and still be able to get a really good look around the front of my property. Some of the other benefits to this type of camera is that this one in particular has onboard recording, so you don't have to have an NVR. It's got a power cord, so you don't have to worry about charging or changing batteries. The Lorax Home app, which comes with it, is free, has no cloud fees, and you can monitor and control your camera from anywhere using multiple devices like your uh, Android or iOS. It has dual onboard motion-activated LED lights. It comes with two-way communication, so you can speak through it as well as hear it. And it's got person detection, remote siren, and I love the fact that they made this part of their Fusion lineup, which means if you have a Fusion and VR system already, you're able to integrate this unit in with 24 by seven recording using the ethernet cable that's provided here. Now that we got all the nerdy stuff out of the way, the first thing we're gonna wanna do before we go outside and start to mount this unit is we're gonna wanna connect this to power and make sure it's working and enable it on the Lorax Home app. So your very first step should be to go get the Lorax Home app. If you're a new user to Lorax, go online to your iOS or Android store, download the app, create a free profile for yourself, and then you'll be ready to register this device. If you've already got the Lorax Home app because you've got other devices, go get your phone or your tablet, bring it over, and we'll be ready to start. Okay, so I've gone through and I've already downloaded the Lorax Home app. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect the camera itself to the Lorax Home application. So you have to use the cable that's provided with the, the camera. The cable is 10 feet long, if I didn't mention that earlier, just so you're wondering. And what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna, first things first, we're gonna open the Lorax Home application. So once you have the application open, if you're a first time user, you'll have a plus sign that says add device. I already have this camera on my network, or I already have cameras on my network working. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna press the plus button in the top right. And it wants me to scan the QR code located on the device. The QR code is right here on the device. So it's found the device ID and it's saying to hit next. So I've done that. So how would I like to connect it? Wireless or wired? I'm gonna do wireless. And it says, uh, before you continue, please ensure your device is plugged in and powered on. So we're gonna do that right now. I plugged the device in. On the bottom, there's a red light right now, which you may not be able to see. And it says, you hear the camera start up and the camera, oh, there we go, it's moving. <laughs> And this may take up to 60 seconds. So it's doing some stuff right now. It's moving. You can see it there. It's flashing red at the moment. Ooh, that's nice and loud. Now there's a green light, which is what we want. So we're going to hit next. Okay, so the first thing it does is it connects to the Lorex camera. So Wi-Fi connects directly to the camera. And then once it's connected to the camera, you enter a password into the actual camera itself. So write that down for future.
And then it asks you to connect to your wireless network. Oh, it's connecting. It's made some noises. Setup almost complete. Wait until the camera LED turns a solid green and then tap next. Okay, so it's a solid green. So we're gonna hit next. Adding device. Now you get to choose a name for it. I'm gonna put garage because that's where it's gonna go. Garage and I'm gonna rename it garage PTZ. No, PT. I'm gonna rename it garage PT. And complete it. So let's see, we should be able to see it now. I'm gonna take the sticker off the lens and let's look at the footage. Should see me. <laughs> There's me. All right. Click to enable PZ, it says here. And move it around. With hair. Let's turn to the side. The other side. Yep, looks like it's working fine. Okay, so we have it connected now. So we're gonna turn off the application here. Now we're ready to go out and install it. Okay, so um, I went out and I have these um, aluminum flat strips right here. Um, these are uh, one eighth by two inches by three feet long each. And I use them when I installed the original um, cameras so what i do is i cut these with a regular saw bit and then um, i can put these in the soffits instead of drilling so many holes in the soffits so for this particular one i think it'll work it's pretty close in terms of uh, the size it's actually a little smaller my other camera mounts fit on here a little easier but these ones should fit they're right on the edges um, the middle one definitely fits great the side ones i'm just going to have to be very careful when i drill the holes and then once the holes are drilled, they give you this nice little sticker here to make sure you got the right spots. I will mount this bracket right on top like that. And once that's done, then I can actually just pop this, pop this in and click it into place. And on here, there's an arrow right there. I don't, it might be hard to see right there. And you basically put it in here and you twist it to lock it in place. So it's gonna hang like this off my roof, twist and lock into place. So, now that being said, hopefully you can hear me, it's windy. I decided on the back of the house. I had a camera right here and this camera couldn't move. So it basically shot straight down here onto the patio, which is fine. But I always wanted to know if the sliding door was open and that camera had a hard time seeing it. So that's where I decided to put it. Um, I've creatively run power for now. So here's how it's gonna go. Power outlet, ran a wire up here, tucked it under the soffit. I'm gonna try and hide that a little bit better. And then I'll connect the camera to that. Okay, so I'm gonna drill a couple holes here. Just little pilot holes. So I just got three holes drilled into this piece of uh, aluminum. Let me show it to you. Here it is here. One, two, three. One's really close to the edge, but I think it's fine. And uh, we'll stick that into the soffit and we'll be able to hang this uh, camera nice and easy that way. Okay, so I've successfully mounted the bracket onto the aluminum framing. Here, I'll show you. There it is, screwed in. What I did was I ended up uh, putting it through the back. The screws are too long. So I took a Dremel to cut the ends off. So I have a little Dremel that I use and uh, trimmed the edges off the screw so it'll like tuck in nice and not dig into the soffit. All right, so now we're gonna mount the camera to the actual bracket here. So I'm just gonna put the cable through the hole, which I just did. You align the uh, the arrow right here up with the locking piece. Let's see here, pop it in.
There we go. Turn and twist until it clicks. There. All right, we're just gonna go up here. Done. Look at that. Nice in there. Here it is here. All right, so here it is here, all finished. That's what it looks like up there. Kind of did my best to tuck the wires out, but that part's a little awkward. That's the old one right there. I'll show you some comparisons of the two as well. Okay, I'm gonna show you how to add your new camera to the Fusion system. Uh, just in case you wanna be able to watch your footage from your PC, for example. Unless you connect the camera with the ethernet cable, it won't record 24 by seven. So if you have it wirelessly connected, uh, it won't record it 24 by seven, but it will record the clips, uh, the motion detection. So here I will show you how to connect it to your Fusion system in a second. Okay, once you have your, uh, once you've logged into your Fusion device, here's mine here, you're gonna wanna click on the camera button and you're gonna wanna hit registration. What you'll wanna do is you'll wanna click the device search button and then what you'll see is you'll see your new camera come up in this in this line right here. Now I've already clicked mine, I did it a minute ago. You're gonna to wanna to click the checkbox that's on the left and you're gonna hit add. Once it's added, it'll show it down here as the bottom camera. What you need to do is hit the checkbox here and hit reconnect IPC. You'll be prompted for the password that you put into the device when you set it up. So you created a password for your device when you first set it up. You just enter the password in, hit reconnect, and then it will turn this uh, red, red button to green. And once you've got that, you'll be good to go. So then you'll have your camera in the actual settings. And here's mine right here. So you'll be able to see it as part of your big group of cameras. All right, so here we go. We're gonna load the Lorex app and I can show you guys in the actual uh, interface on the computer what things look like. Here it is here. So this is what you're greeted with when you first log into the app. Uh, we're gonna hit the live view so I can show you guys what it looks like. Uh, it's gonna have my default group of cameras and it's gonna load them all here on the left. So I'm gonna go with my NVR. So these are my cameras right now. I actually have uh, more than four. So I have, I'll show you guys here. One on my front garage door left, one on the front garage door right, one over top of my front door. This is the backyard 4K camera. This is the pan tilt camera we're gonna show you a little bit more with right now. Doorbell camera from Lorex, and then one in the garage as well. So. Uh, let's focus in on the actual new camera. So this is it here. So right now this camera is a 2K camera. It's connected wirelessly. There is no wires for this camera. Uh, sorry for my backyard, it's a little bit messy and it's a pan tilt camera. So this is kind of the default position on it. You can move it around. Um, in order to move it, you just click the pan tilt button down here and I can scroll up on it and move it up. And right now it's got, um, HDR on it. So what it's doing is it's trying to get the best light quality for everything. So the sky is obviously very bright. So it's using some uh, some intelligence to make the sky darker, a little bit darker, so you can see it better. But in the shadows, it's trying to light up the shadows as well. So this camera, we can move it all over the place here. This is all done being done wirelessly right now. So it takes a second as it moves to kind of get become a little more clear. But once it moves, it does it pretty quickly. And it's pretty easy to control on the application here. I find it pretty fast. Uh, you finesse it a little bit just here and there. You don't want to hit it, the buttons for too long because there's a tiny bit of lag between the, the, the button and it actually moving. But you can see the quality is quite good. Um, there's my outdoor camera right here on the right. Um, this is my 4K regular bullet camera that's wired. This is connected through PoE. Um, but this is sort of like another tester here. And the one thing I liked about this was this camera I can put straight down right on the door. 
So I can create a zone right on the stairs here and essentially at this front door so that if anybody walks into this zone, it's going to notify me. The thing that's neat about this as well is if they walk into the zone, the camera can track the person. So I'm going to show you that here in a second, but essentially it'll track me walking along um, as I'm here on the camera. So you can see it moves around pretty well. Uh, I would say the application on the phone, it takes even a little bit longer to move it and it requires a little more finessing, but uh, overall it works quite well in terms of the actual pan tilt functionality. And here I'll give you a little taste of what the zoom looks like as well. So let's go over to my neighbor's garage or shed here and we'll zoom in. So up here on the top right, I can hit the zoom button and we can zoom in a little bit. So this is a 2K camera. It doesn't have quite the resolution that my 4Ks do, and I'll kind of give you a comparison of that in a second. But like, as you can see, it's pretty good. Um, as you move in closer and closer, it starts to become a little more digitized, but I'm still getting a pretty good feel for what's going on here. Now it's very, you know, kind of fuzzy digitized. And I think for the purpose of trying to compare it to the back, the other camera in the backyard here, I'm gonna go down and look at the brick. And you can get an idea of how the brick looks right here. This is 2K, I'm gonna zoom in a bit. Still looks very clear. Um, it's quite easy to see everything. Now we're starting to lose a little bit of the detail, but it's pretty decent, right? So if I switch cameras right now, so I'm gonna to go to the backyard camera. So this is my regular 4K, eight megapixel PoE camera. Um, the colors are a little bit more uh, normal looking and I think that's just because I'm not using HDR on this camera um, I don't need HDR for this specific scenario here because I don't have the bright sky to contend with I'm just sort of aimed in this one spot and then I also have the zoom here so I'll sort of zoom in and show you there's more detail in the ground so you can see I'd say arguably you can see detail much better with this one um, than the other one but there's the actual pan tilt camera right there. You can see there's the wireless antennas there and the camera can move a full 360 on the left. So this one, I still have zones here as well and I can still see the sliding door, but it is nice to be able to look around to the right because over here is a blind spot on the right hand side of my camera over here. On the left, I can see all the way down the, uh, the backyards to the other neighbors, but on the right, I can't see anything. So it is nice to be able to see that. So if I go back to the this one here, I can move this around here. So if I want, I can see this. And the nice thing I said like before is if I actually, or somebody else walks into this zone that I've created for this camera, it's gonna actually track them and follow them, which is pretty great. Hear me? All right, so right now we're looking at the camera from my other camera, and I will say that this is a very versatile camera, and here's my thoughts on it. This camera has three different ways you can use it. If you're a user who doesn't have any security equipment at all, and you have no real need or want to try and wire security cameras, you can simply purchase this camera. It's Wi-Fi, so it'll connect to your home network. As long as you can get power to it, because you do need to plug it in so that the motors can move, this could be a really good option for you. You mount this camera, you have the pan tilt functionality, you can set zones on it, it does come with storage built in it, so you'll have 32 gigs built into it right off the start so that you can record either motion detection or you can record 24 by seven if you choose to. I will say that if you decide to record 24 by seven on a 32 gig card, it probably will rewrite itself fairly often, so you may not have a lot of days worth of footage. However, the card is upgradable. And the only other thought around that is typically with an SD card, if you're rewriting and writing to it all of the time, you will wear it out more quickly than if say you just did motion detection. However, cards are cheap. And if you want 24 by seven, no problem, knock yourself out. The other thing that's really cool about it is that if you're already a Lorex customer and you have an, a Lorex NVR, there's the ability to connect this hardwired with an ethernet cable. 
So you could bypass the wireless side of this altogether, connect it with a hardwired cable right to your NVR, and then you have the ability to record your footage 24 by seven, as long as you have space on your NVR for another camera. So you've got the wired connection, 24 by seven footage, and you don't have to worry about the SD card on the actual unit itself or wireless having any sort of an issue within your house or outside. So that's the second way you can do it. The third way you can do this in the way that I have mine set up currently is I have the Lorex Fusion system. So I'm kind of doing the best of both worlds here. I've got it connected wirelessly because it's actually very inconvenient to run another ethernet cable to the spot where this camera is for me. However, I do have the ability to record the footage 24 by seven on my NVR regardless because the Lorax Fusion system can accept both wired and wireless cameras. So depending on how many wireless devices you have, mine can accept up to two. I could record this footage 24 by seven. So in my case, my system right now has the Lorex doorbell, which is recording 24 by seven on the Fusion system. I could do the same with this one as well, but I've decided against it. I'm actually letting the camera record the footage on the SD card. All I need is the motion. I don't really care about 24 by seven for this particular device because I already have this other backdoor camera as well that already does that. And I'm gonna use it that way. So like I said, it's really versatile in terms of how you can configure it and set it up. It's very straightforward for a basic uh, beginner user, but it can also be much more advanced for somebody who's got a more complicated setup or who's got something with a little more um, in terms of cameras and, and how they're working their system. Hey guys, just about to wrap up this video, but I wanted to give you some final thoughts on the Lorax 2K Pan Tilt Wi-Fi camera. There's a lot of pros to this camera and I think there's gonna be a lot of people out there who want a simple system that doesn't take a long time to install, that isn't complicated with an NVR and lots of cables. They're gonna like this type of a camera. And it also comes with a ton of features and a lot of pros to that, which is big field of view with that panning and tilting. It comes with the sirens, the lights. It comes with the back and forth communication, the person detection. Also doesn't have cloud fee storage. All good things. Um, the one thing I didn't like about the camera was the power cord. I like the fact that it's powered, so I'm kind of on the fence with that part of it because I don't wanna to have to change a battery. But knowing that most people have a home with probably an outlet at the front of their house and the back of their house means you have to actually figure out how you're gonna get power to the camera. So the good news for folks in the US, if you don't wanna tackle a project like that, Lorax works with a company called InstallerNet. They can come and do that work for you. Obviously there's a charge for it, but they can probably do it a lot neater and cleaner than you'll be able to do it. In Canada, that installer net's not available yet, but there are companies out there that could definitely come in or even an electrical contractor if you really wanted to clean up the wiring and make it easier to look at. Um, the risk that I thought of when I was wiring it was that if I have an outlet near the ground and it goes up to the camera, it's, it leaves the camera a little bit vulnerable um, the one good thing I would say is that because of the motion detection and zones, if somebody was to walk into that area, I'm going to get a notification. It's going to have footage on the camera. And even if they cut the camera power, I would still be able to see what happened at that time. Um, so there's always risks with security equipment. Everything's vulnerable if you want to be, you know, I could throw a rock at one of my PoE cameras too, and it would probably knock it off. So, you know, you've got to take it with a grain of salt. There's also ways that you can protect your power if it is near the ground. There's boxes you can put around the outlet so people can't unplug it, that kind of thing. But that was the only negative. I, from an aesthetic purpose, I just found it a little more tricky to make it look nice so it doesn't look ugly on the side of my house. Um, but I'm also not the person to go hire a contractor or somebody to actually make it look good. So... Uh, for the price of the camera, it might be worth having an electrician come in and actually make it look good for you on the side of your house. Overall, that was my only gripe with the entire thing. I really do like the camera. It's a nice add to my system, and I hope you guys find the same thing. Um, if you are interested in the camera, I've got some links down below. I've also got links to just Lorex, the website, and the different promotions they have. If you buy direct from them, they seem to have a lot of promos through the year. Um, click on the links. You'll see some stuff there, and potentially maybe you'll find that camera or a uh, full security system if you guys are interested in more than just the, uh, the wireless camera. So if you have any questions, please leave them for me. Thanks for watching the video. It's nice to see everyone again. It's been a while since I've had a video online. So looking forward to doing a few more and I've got a, a few more security things I'm gonna do over the next little while.